Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hexmap game development series. At this point in the series we've got the start of our UI in place and some reasonable graphics in terms of woodcutters, stonemasons and farmers. Feel free to pause this video and take a look at some of the earlier ones if you'd like to see how we got to this point. Today we'll be linking everything up with the game mechanics so that we can start keeping track of resources, actually pay to get our buildings constructed and properly attribute the advantages received from these buildings. This will shed some light on the process of getting a gameplay idea to actual implementation. A large part of what we're covering today is about how we represent our game information behind the scenes. Up until now, we've allowed ourselves to build as many cabins and farms as we wanted to. They didn't cost any resources and they provided no advantages, apart from just being fun to look at, of course. But a game needs some constraints and your decisions need to have an impact. We start off with creating a data structure or class for the information we need to store for our city itself, similar to what we did for resources where we stored how long they take to harvest, how many there are per location, etc. Our city's information will be expanded on later, but for now we include the following factors. Firstly, we need to store its resource stockpiles. I'm putting this in a separate class since we'll be using it in a few different places. Stock info stores how many people we have available to fill certain roles and how much of each resource we have available to use. We also store the city's production capabilities in a separate class. This represents the rate at which new resources become available. Additionally, we store the city's capacity information in a third separate class. These include industry, food supply, appeal and order. We will see later how these mechanics impact the game. Finally, we have three integers for keeping track of how many people we've employed in each of the three different vocation types throughout the game. Countrymen would be the resource gatherers outside the city, employed would be city employees, and settlers would be units sent out onto the map for various tasks. In order to create a city behind the scenes, we simply allocate memory for the city and call the constructor of the class, specifying values for each variable in each subclass. This is the same process we used to define resource and gatherer types before. We create an array to cater for more than one city later on, but only populate one for now. Next, we define a general building specification class. Apart from the name string, which we'll use dynamically in UI text, and the indication of which resource type this building is for, we have the same three classes as for the city. In these, we specify how much of each resource the building costs, how much of each resource it produces once built, and how much of each type of capacity it adds for the city. We also implement a method to tell us if the city can currently afford to build that building. It just checks whether the city stockpiles contain enough of each resource type specified by the cost of the building. You'll notice a UI message being displayed when the city cannot afford the building. You'll also notice how it uses the defined name of the building, but we'll get to that later. And now we can define our different building types following the same process as with the city, with one building type for each resource type. Now for each instance of a building we build, there will be some extra information specific to that building to store. For now we only have the level of that building. So we create a building class that looks very similar to the building specifications class, with the level included. We could exclude the three separate classes and always link these back to the building type class. However, if we do include them here, we could initially set them up as per the building type, but then also change the specifications per individual building should we need that functionality later. As part of this class, we have the build method. It subtracts the required resources from the city stockpiles, updates the number of workers and then adds the production and capacity that the building provides to the city. It then sets a flag to indicate that some action has been taken. 
so that the game engine knows it needs to update the UI values, which we'll also get to later. So now, whenever we build one of the three buildings as before, we just need to slot in the behind the scenes method as well to actually affect the build. At that point in the code, we already know which type of building is being built. So adding these four lines covers all our building types in one go. We can do this because we made the building specification so general, so it caters for all the possible buildings. So if we now build these buildings on the map, you will see how the resources, production and capacity change as a result. When we build a farm, the resources decrease, but the rate at which people join your city increases, and your city's food supply capacity also increases by 8. So you'll be able to attract new workers to expand with. Building a woodcutter or stonemason's cabin reduces resources, but increases the respective rates at which wood and stone are obtained. But I haven't shown you how we get these text labels to update yet. It's very straightforward. In the UI script, we specify a text mesh pro element for each of the UI labels. Then, whenever an action has been taken that impacts on these, we set them equal to the corresponding values in the city information class. You can see the resources, production and capacity groups being addressed here. So whenever we take an action that updates the city's information, the labels get updated as well. But how do we stop ourselves from plonking down more and more buildings? We've already introduced the method that tests whether a building can be afforded. All we do now is test for it when we try to build a building. If we can afford it, we continue building and subtracting the resources from our stockpiles. If not, we stop the intended building and display a message to inform the player of the situation. Since we may want to have more than one message visible on the screen for a while to allow the player to read them all, should a few come in close together, I've built a very basic message displaying system that moves older messages up when a new message is created. Messages are also displayed for a set amount of time, after which they fade out for a set amount of time. In order to achieve this, we use something similar to the tooltip with a few differences. Firstly, our messages don't follow the mouse cursor, but stay put in one place over time. Secondly, it's not linked to a mouse over button event. We display the message for a set amount of time, after which it fades out. Thirdly, while there is always at most one tooltip which we just enable and disable, we should allow for more than one message, and we should destroy messages that have run their course, and create new ones when required. So like for the tooltip, we have an add message script. We create a static method to allow us to create a message from any script. We create a list of messages which allows us to add new ones and remove ones that have run their course. Each time we add a message, we call a method to reset all message positions. This just adjusts the offset of each message, so we're able to move the messages up by a multiple of the line height specified as a parameter. The older the message, the higher it moves on the screen, until it fades out and is eventually removed from the list and destroyed. And that's it for today. Our graphics and UI have now been properly linked to our gameplay and mechanics so the player is limited by the constraints on resources and his actions are actually impacting the game in specific ways. Since we've created very generic classes and methods, we can now quite easily expand on this by including more building types, specifically ones that are not based on gathering resources. More about that in a future video. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!